Light is the embodiment of life and growth. For billions of people, the day's work starts each morning at first light. However, in our modern civilization, the light does not go out in the evening. Electric light also has a huge effect on our lives today. In other words, all light is not equal. Isaac Newton used a prism to demonstrate early on that white light is composed of different colors. Likewise, various sources of light also consist of different proportions of color. For example, candlelight appears redder and warmer than the light from a classic fluorescent lamp. We humans require light primarily to see. In modern times, vision has become increasingly important in comparison with other senses. However, since around the turn of the last millennium, we know that light means more to us than just brightness. It has a far greater effect on us than we had previously thought. The wise man, Homo sapiens, our direct ancestor, has existed for about 200,000 years. Up until 150 years ago, all he was aware of, apart from fire, was sunlight. No wonder then, that daylight had such a defining effect on humans. Humans have internalized the day-night rhythm. Many processes within the organism were adapted to this 24-hour cadence. The body functions very differently at night than it does during the day. What began as an adaptive response to external conditions has long since become a vital rhythm. Health and well-being are hugely dependent on this circadian rhythm. Hormone levels, blood pressure, mood, and motivation change based on the internal clock. It is true that this internal clock also continues to tick in enclosed rooms devoid of daylight. However, it does not work entirely independently of external influences. Light appears to play a decisive role here. But how can light make an impact? In 2002, scientists made an amazing discovery. There is a hitherto unknown third receptor for incidental light in the human eye. In addition to the previously identified rods for night vision and the cones for color vision, they found cells that are not linked to visual impressions. The interesting thing about these ganglion cells is that a new photoreceptor has been discovered containing photoprotein called melanopsin. Our hormones are controlled via melanopsin, and this is what actually constituted the previously unknown sensation. Let us follow a beam of light into the eye. After the light has passed through the cornea and lens, and then the jelly-like vitreous body, it falls on the retina. There are different layers of cells here. The uppermost layers consist of ganglion cells and nerve cells that form connections. Below this lie the rods and cones. These are the receptors that are responsible for vision. The incoming light triggers a nerve impulse that is rooted back to the surface of the retina. From here, it is then transmitted via the optic nerve along the visual pathway to the visual cortex. This is part of the cerebral cortex and is where our visual impression emerges from the multitude of data provided by the retinal receptors. Now back to the ganglion cells that contain melanopsin. These are located between other ganglion cells in the upper layers of the retina. When stimulated by a light impulse, the nerve impulse follows a different pathway from that used by the rods and cones. It initially also follows the optic nerve out of the eye. However, these nerve fibers do not lead to the cerebral cortex. They interconnect in the so-called suprachiasmatic nucleus two grain-sized nuclei. This control center constitutes the internal clock in humans. This clock also controls the pituitary gland, sends out hormones that regulate intrinsic rhythms within the body and align metabolic processes with the time of day. Other nerve pathways run to activation centers in the brain and to control centers in the spinal cord, to the pineal gland, and to the hypothalamus. Together, these nuclei control many vegetative processes, in other words, unconscious processes, in the body via neural stimuli and hormones. But once again we can state, all light is not equal. 
An experiment has demonstrated that blue light stimulates the ganglion cells containing melanopsin to a far greater degree than, for example, red light. We have understood that the ganglion cells containing melanopsin have functions that go beyond that of vision. In other words, they fulfill a significant function in the regulation of our intrinsic hormone systems. So what now follows from the insights into these non-visual or biological effects of light on humans? Chronobiologists, medical professionals, and industry representatives got to work. Their aim was to artificially simulate the effects of natural illumination so that the positive effects can be utilized. We noted that people are increasingly spending time in enclosed rooms, internal rooms, sometimes with inadequate lighting. Insufficient illumination can sometimes cause conditions similar to depression, i.e. the eye does not receive enough light to synchronize the body. We can now address this problem by way of modern lighting systems using color temperature dependent control systems. A variety of factors are integral to meaningful biological effective lighting technology. For example, the color of the light and illumination intensity must be aligned with a circadian rhythm throughout the day. In the mornings, after work has started, light with a higher intensity and an increased proportion of blue supports alertness and productivity. This enables concentration to be maintained at lunchtime and throughout the afternoon. Towards evening, the illumination intensity should drop off and the proportion of red should increase. This supports humans as they prepare for sleep. The direction of the light also plays a role. Highly planar illumination from above is recommended, as it is mainly in the lower portion of the retina that the receptors containing melanopsin are sensitive. Again, individual spotlights with a warmer light color are desirable towards evening to ensure that as few ganglia containing melanopsin as possible are stimulated. The industrial sector picked up very quickly on the impetus provided by research. This has resulted in an entirely new branch of development in modern lighting technology. The lighting industry is now already in a position to offer numerous new products for different areas of life that optimally support prerequisites of light so as to be beneficial to health. Appropriate lighting systems have been introduced at the workplace as biologically effective light encourages well-being and productivity. This is exemplified by the head office of the Erber Group near Vienna. Special floor lamps are used here that emit planar light upwards for an indirect effect and direct targeted light downwards. I must say I'm really delighted with the new light installation here, especially with the biodynamic light right by me over my desk. I also feel I'm fresher in the evenings, I'm even more receptive, and I often sit here working, working, working some more. And then, all of a sudden, goodness, it is 6.30 or 7 o'clock, but it doesn't feel like it, as my body somehow feels even fresher. After just under a year of using this extremely high-end, high-quality light, we can only say that the investment has certainly been worthwhile. That it motivates our employees and also results in better performance. And that there is also the option of taking this energy home and not just returning home tired after eight hours of work. A study carried out in a primary school in Hamburg has shown that biologically effective light is also effective in the school setting. The result? Pupils in classrooms where a biologically effective lighting design was installed exhibited significantly higher levels of concentration, worked faster and performed better. I have noticed that this lighting system that is designed to promote concentration has a huge effect on the class. Everyone is exposed to the same lighting conditions, and they work in a far more targeted fashion, which is really good for the class. Of course, this is then also good for us teachers. Well, I think it's really cool, as it is very easy to adjust the lights, and that's basically fun. And then it's really easy to concentrate during exams and during rest periods. It really is restful. Yes, and that's what I think is so great. 
Biologically effective light has now demonstrated the favorable effects it exerts on humans. Research and industry are working on better and better energy saving and cost effective solutions. Humans have been familiar with electric light for approximately 150 years. Now, the era of biologically effective light has begun. <laughs>